Hey guys, it's Sean from that DIY Couple. I'm here to give you some interview tips about interviewing during a pandemic. So my name is John. I've been an interviewer for Yale University for a number of years as a volunteer. I graduated from Yale University. I also went to Cornell for law school. I've interviewed probably at this point hundreds of people for Yale. And I think it's really important for people who want to go to these schools, whether it's Yale or some other school, to know how to best present themselves as a candidate. And also to take considerations of what they might need to consider during the weird times that we're living in. So obviously, I'm gonna talk about interviews right now. We have other videos on our channel talking about college admissions in general, writing essays, um, other parts of your application. But the interview is something that I have most familiarity with, and it's probably something that you guys out there, if you're watching this, might be most nervous about. So uh, let's just talk about the interview today. If you have more questions about college admissions in general, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. So when you're interviewing during these times, almost certainly your interview is gonna be virtual. All in-person interviews for uh, most schools that I'm aware of are happening on Zoom or in some other virtual way. So one of the big considerations when you do that is when you're having the interview, make sure you're doing it in a quiet, controlled area. I've already seen interviews and heard of people doing interviews where they're either in a really loud place at home, like there's lots of sound, maybe somebody's talking in another room or cleaning, or um, the background of where they're sitting is very distracting or very strange. I know sometimes when you're doing an interview, you might be doing it in your room or in your bedroom or whatever, but obviously if you're in your bedroom, make sure that your bed is made up. Maybe if you have some really strange posters or some strange things on your walls, think about that because um, as an interviewer, uh, what I'm doing is looking at you kind of holistically. So I'm considering what you're talking about and who you are, but also other things like, are you presentable? Do you seem comfortable? Do you seem uncomfortable? Are you easy to talk to? Are you mature? Are you curious? Are you whatever? So if you have stuff around you that makes me think uh, in a certain way, that might distract me or color how your interview is gonna go. So that's just something I wanna say off the bat about interviewing during a pandemic, uh, when everything is happening online. You wanna make sure that as much as you can, you control the environment that you're interviewing in and not to distract the interview with something that you don't wanna to present to him or her. The second biggest tip that I have for people doing an interview during a pandemic is to make sure that you tell the story. So an interview, uh, whether it's on a phone call or on a video call or in person is really about you presenting yourself as a coherent individual. So something that I really hate to see in interviews that really confuses me and I think that is something that people should consider is I'll look at somebody's resume or they'll tell me a story about, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm really great at math and sciences. I love um, in my AP calculus course. That's my favorite class. I have this professor that's great. And I'll say, awesome, well, tell me about your favorite extracurricular activity because I see on your, your sheet that you did, you know, maybe the math club, physics club. And they'll say, oh, you know, my favorite activity was when uh, I took Spanish. And I'll say, oh, great, well, are you, are you, you know, do you speak Spanish fluently? Like, oh, no, no, I did a one week immersion course in a different country or something like that. And that type of stuff for me is very confusing because what I'm thinking in my mind is if you're saying that I'm great at math and science, I'm sort of painting a picture about you as being someone who is math and science inclined. So I'd like that story to be about how great you are at math and science, how much you love math and science, maybe you're good at other things too. But a lot of times students try to say, throw everything at the wall and say like, I'm great at math, I'm great at physics, I'm great at Spanish, I'm great at English, I'm great at history, I'm great at whatever. And it's very rare for a student to be, you know, equally interested in all those subjects, equally inclined to all those subjects. So if you're trying to make a narrative about yourself, make a story about yourself, it's really important to think about how is somebody else who doesn't know me at all, who has no context for who I am, how are they gonna interpret me? Am I a math and science more inclined person? Am I a humanities more inclined person, foreign language? Uh, am I trying to present myself as a, a medical person? You know, I'm interested in uh, maybe going to medical school, law school, whatever else. Obviously you don't have to know that as a student. It's important to for you to be coherent. I think that that's, Telling a story about yourself and the answers that you give is very important because an interview is an hour long. The output of the interview is that I write something that Yale is gonna see. And if the output of my of the interview is, you know, I didn't really understand this person, they said they liked this, they said they liked that, we couldn't really talk about anything because they kept trying to throw everything on the wall, that's not gonna be a great sort of recommendation for me because I just don't know how to how to paint you. The, the way that I evaluate people, the strongest comparison I can make is say, in the context of all the people that I've interviewed this year or that I've ever interviewed, this person really stands out, or this person is really exceptional. So if there are other people that I've interviewed that I can put in these boxes and say, 
this is that person, this is this person, this is that person. And I can't really figure out how you fit together as somebody who I've interviewed before. It's a little bit hard for me to, to give a strong recommendation about uh, who you are as a student. Another thing to consider about interviewing on Zoom is make sure you look at the camera and not at yourself. I've seen interviews with people where, you know, they're on a computer and they are maybe half of the screen or maybe in a small corner of the screen or whatever. And during the whole interview, they're looking at the small corner of the screen where they themselves are talking. And that's really distracting because in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, normally if we were talking in person, I'd be making eye contact with you. You wouldn't be looking off to the side or to wherever else while we're talking. So as much as possible, either look at the screen kind of where my face is gonna be or look at the camera so that when I look at you, I can kind of see your, your eyes. Don't look off in a different direction while we're interviewing because it's just not personable and I found it a little bit distracting. This is a tip I think that's generalizable to just having any sort of interview on uh, video conferencing, but make sure to either look at the camera or look at yourself. Don't look off somewhere else while you're talking um, unless, you know, for whatever reason, that's the only way you feel comfortable communicating. Another tip that I have for college interviewees is to talk a lot. So something that I do and I think a lot of interviewers do is the last questions like, what's your blank? What's your favorite? course in school, who's your favorite teacher, what's your favorite extracurricular activity that you did, what did you do last summer? And obviously those questions can lend themselves to very direct answers. So if I ask what's your favorite class and you say my AP Physics class, that is an answer to my question. But obviously what I'm trying to get at is why is that your favorite class? What about it is makes it your favorite class? How does it being your favorite class tell a story about who you are? How does it reveal more about who you are as a person? And if I have to ask a thousand questions to get there, it's gonna be really hard for me to paint that picture because I'll feel like I'm pulling teeth. You know, I feel like I have to really go through extreme effort to get the real story. So if you get a question that's like, what did I do last summer? The right answer is to say, here's what I did and here's why I thought it was important or here's why I really liked it or here's why I didn't like it. Anything like that to get more color is great. And the more you talk, the more things that you say, the more things that I can key in on and draw out and have a conversation about. So if you say, last summer I went on a abroad program, I went to a different country, and you know, I went to Italy, and I stayed in a small city in Italy, and I learned Italian, and I traveled all around Europe. That's a lot of information. I can say, oh, I went to Italy too. Uh, where did you go? Um, oh, did you go to this thing that I also went to in Rome? Or, oh, did you visit Austria, you know, which is near Italy, for example. That lends itself to more natural conversations, and then maybe we could talk about, say you really like history, we could talk about the history of Rome. Or maybe you really like architecture, we could talk about the architecture in the city that you lived in. Or maybe you read a really cool book while you were on the train from Austria to Italy, or whatever it might be. Those are all natural conversation topics that we could kind of flow into without me having to sit and say, let's go down the list of questions that I might have for you um, based on uh, you know your resume or whatever we're talking about. Something else important to think about is how do I talk about all of my extracurricular and sporting activities when I'm not able to do any of those activities this year um, in person? And I think a big component of that is to say, obviously as a senior, you've done these activities for the last you know two or three years. I think a lot of people probably didn't do activities at the beginning of this year, so they're the end of their junior year but everybody is in the same boat with these activities. The fact that you weren't able to be you know, the captain of your varsity baseball team because there was no baseball this year isn't going to be a mark against you because no one was able to be the captain of their baseball team um, this year. No one was able to you know, play on their senior varsity sport probably depending on where you live because of the pandemic. So don't stress about those things. You're being evaluated in the context of everybody else and everybody else is going through the same stuff that you're going through. Maybe your high school did allow you to have sports. Maybe your neighbor's high school, the high school next year has had sports, but yours didn't. That's okay. Colleges are gonna know that. They're gonna be able to communicate with the schools and say, look, did you have any sporting events? Did you have in-person education? Did you have extracurricular events? So if you did the activity, if you didn't do the activity, don't stress about it. Colleges understand that this is a weird time and you don't have to have you know, done something absolutely insanely dangerous to get the point across that you really like your sporting activity or your other extracurricular activity that was canceled. It's significant to rely on the stuff that you did beforehand and a college can kind of say like, oh, well they did this varsity sport for three years but weren't able to do it in their senior year because it was canceled. That's not a big deal. Obviously you're really into the varsity sport that you did. Maybe you're gonna pursue that in college. 
don't worry about it. The last big tip that I have for people interviewing is make sure that you get across what you want to get across. So I know I talked about before not throwing a bunch of stuff at the interviewer that isn't coherent and might not be um, a coherent story, but a tip that I've always used when I've been interviewing for a job or for whatever else is to think of the two or three things, maybe four or five things that are really the most important about me or the most important for whatever I'm interviewing for and make sure I say those in some way. Make sure that I weave them into the conversation. So for example, maybe I am Muslim. Maybe that's a really big part of my identity, but it's not obvious from my application or from anything about me that I would be. If I want to talk about that and I want to get that into the interview, I, I can think about ways where I can move that into the, the conversation topic. So for example, what I did last summer, I might say, well, you know, I spent a lot of time uh, involved in my local mosque or my local uh, uh, you know, religiously affiliated student group or whatever it might be. And that might lend itself to more interesting questions. Say, for example, you really want to discuss how much you love a musical instrument, but maybe you didn't do any activities at school like that. You might say, oh, you know, in my free time, I love playing piano or playing violin or whatever it might be. Um, and that, again, can lend itself to more questions and more topics. Something, a big mistake that I find people do a lot is they're not comfortable kind of knowing what makes them significant or what makes them important. If you have a really unique attribute about you that other people don't have, good or bad, it's important, I think, to express that and to make sure that college admissions committees know that. So for example, if you grew up with a single parent because your other parent wasn't in the picture, that's important. And I think that a lot of applicants to some of these more prestigious schools don't have that background. That's going to make you stand out and it's going to make your accomplishments seem in the context of other applicants more impressive because again you were you were put into a situation that a lot of other students don't experience say you had to work as a student say one of your uh, siblings passed away or a parent passed away say you had to move abruptly anything like that those are important things to move into the conversation because they make your other achievements be seen in a different context a lot of applicants for these great schools are going to have great educational backgrounds, all the money in the world, parents that devoted themselves to the student to make sure that they got good grades. If you don't fall into any of those buckets, it's important for you to distinguish yourself and say, look, I didn't have all the advantages that other students might have, but I still did well. I was still very academically impressive. I still did a lot of extracurricular activities, sporting activities, whatever it might be. Um, I really, really, really encourage you, if you have those unique things about you, to talk about them in the context of your application in an essay, in an interview, in some way, get them across so that a school can understand who you are as an entire person. You might not think that those things are, are differentiating. Maybe there are a lot of people in your life that came from a similar background or have the similar same problems, but realize when you're applying to these very elite schools, a lot of the students you're applying with are gonna be different than you. So if you're unique and different in that way, talk about it, figure out a way to bring it up in the interview and it'll, it'll definitely reward you in the admissions process. Thank you guys for listening to me. I hope this helps you on your interview for whatever school you apply to. If you'd like to hear more about me talking about college admissions, let me know in the comments. I love talking about it. You can also reach out to us at thatdiycouple at gmail.com to talk more about the admissions process in general. I have worked with students in the past who are applying to schools and I love doing that and making sure their story gets out. Until next time, always make things better and I'll see you then. Thank you.